and welcome to Storytime with Mr. Anderson. Today we're going to be reading The Nutcracker by the New York City Ballet and illustrated by Valeria de Campo. It was Christmas Eve at the Stahlbaum's house and like children everywhere, Marie and Fritz were so excited that they could feel their toes tingle. Their parents were decorating the Christmas tree before the big holiday party and Marie and Fritz were not allowed into the great room until it was done. They jostled each other to sneak a peek at the glittering tree through the keyhole. At last, the guests arrived and the doors were thrown open. Let the party begin, everyone cried as they joyfully filled the festive room. The children danced and played and everyone was merry until the lights flickered and the room grew dark. A mysterious man with a young boy entered from the shadows. The man was dressed all in black with a huge fluttering cape. The children scurried to hide behind their parents just as he paused and flung back his cape over his shoulder. Ah, there was nothing to fear. It was just Herr Drosselmeyer, Marie's beloved godfather. Marie flew into his arms for a hug and shyly met his young nephew. Herr Drosselmeyer was a toy inventor and a visit from him was always full of surprises. The curious children, their eyes full of wonder, gathered round three huge boxes he had brought with him. Suddenly, the boxes sprang open and out leapt one life-size doll, then another and then another. The dolls danced for the delighted crowd. As the celebration continued, Herr Drosselmeyer beckoned to Marie. He had a special gift for her, a nutcracker. The nutcracker was dressed as a handsome soldier with a white beard. Herr Drosselmeyer showed Marie how the nutcracker could open and snap his mouth to crack nuts for everyone. Crack, crack! Marie was enjoying cracking nuts and passing them out to the children when suddenly jealous Fritz swooped in and snatched the nutcracker from her. He swung it around the room and smashed it down onto the floor with a loud bang. Marie burst into tears. Her beloved nutcracker was broken. But Herr Drosselmeyer knew just how to fix the nutcracker. He tied a scarf around the nutcracker's head like a bandage and handed him back to Marie, who cradled him in her arms. Then, Herr Drosselmeyer's nephew gave Marie a tiny bed that was the perfect size for the nutcracker and Marie nestled him in it to rest. The party was coming to a close and everyone joined in for one last grand dance. When the music ended, the guests bundled up and made their way out into the frosty night air. Marie waved goodbye to her dear godfather and his handsome nephew. It had been a long evening and it was time for bed. During the night, Marie awoke, remembering that the nutcracker was alone downstairs in his bed. She ran down to scoop him up. With the nutcracker safely in her arms, she curled up on the sofa and drifted back to sleep in the soft glow of the Christmas tree. She hadn't been asleep for long when Herr Drosselmeyer slipped back into the house to properly mend the nutcracker. He gently slipped him out from Marie's arms, repaired him under the light of the moon and disappeared into the darkness. But then, strange things began to happen. At the stroke of midnight, Marie was pulled from her sleep by the clock chimes. She rubbed her eyes in surprise. 
great big mice appeared from the shadows and began to scurry across the room. With a rumble and a shake, the tree began to grow before her eyes. The lights were flashing brightly as it rose higher and higher. Marie had never seen anything so big. Then Fritz's toy soldiers sprang to life. They marched into battle, the mice. The mice were led by the fierce and terrible Mouse King, who wore a shiny crown on his head. Then the Nutcracker himself came to life, growing until he was the size of Marie. His bed, now huge, spun around and around. The Nutcracker leapt out of the bed and led the battle against the mice. The Mouse King towered over the Nutcracker, taunting him, when a quick-thinking Marie threw her slipper and it landed on the King's head. He turned to look away and the Nutcracker toppled him over. The Nutcracker triumphantly claimed the Mouse King's crown in victory. In that very moment, the ancient spell that had been cast on the Nutcracker was broken. He transformed into a handsome prince who looked very much like Herr Drosselmeyer's nephew. The prince gallantly placed the crown on top of Marie's head and led her by the hand into the starry night, beyond her house and deep into the forest towards the Christmas star. Snow began to fall and the glistening flakes began to dance. The prince took Marie on a fantastic journey. They boarded a cosy walnut boat and sailed into the night, soon landing in an enchanted kingdom called the Land of Sweets. The Land of Sweets was a magical place filled with candy dripping in icing and magnificent, delicious colours as far as the eye could see. News of their arrival travelled fast, and Marie and the prince were greeted by the Sugar Plum Fairy, who reigned over the land. She welcomed them with a curtsy and with a wave of her sparkly wand. A host of delights from her kingdom appeared before them. The prince told the story of their great battle with the Mouse King. Oh, you are both very brave, the Sugar Plum Fairy said. Then she invited them to celebrate by settling into two magnificent candy thrones with big bowls of chocolate, cake and ice cream set before them. The Sugar Plum Fairy summoned everyone in the Land of Sweets to dance for the Prince and Marie in honour of their victory. First, there was a delightful dance of spicy Spanish hot chocolate, heralded by the call of trumpets and snapping fingers. Next came the mysterious Arabian coffee dance that ended with the tinkling of tiny cymbals giving way to the explosive leaps and turns of Chinese tea. The jumping candy canes emerged next, leaping high into the air and dancing through hoops. What could come after candy canes? Marzipan shepherdesses stepped out, tiptoeing delicately while playing their flutes. The biggest surprise of all was the gigantic Mother Ginger, who swaggered before them. All of a sudden, eight tiny clowns, called Polichinelles, sprang from beneath her skirt and danced to the rhythm of her tambourine. As Mother Ginger scooted her children off, a garden of flowers appeared. Amid the blooms was the shimmering dewdrop fairies, and with each step, she brought every single petal to life in blossoming swirls of pink. Finally, the regal sugar plum fairy returned with her noble cavalier. They floated gracefully about 
and then she spun faster and faster before leaping into his arms. It was all so deliciously marvellous. With another wave of her wand, the Sugar Plum Fairy summoned her whole kingdom for a joyous farewell celebration. As much as they wanted to stay, it was time for Marie and the Prince to leave the Land of Sweets and return to their families. As the lovely soft snow continued to fall, they climbed into a beautiful sleigh pulled by a magical reindeer. Marie and the Prince turned to wave goodbye to their new friends as they rose higher and higher into the sky, away from their sweet celebration and into the starry night. The End Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notification of new stories.